Research shows that the classroom learning environment can have a significant impact on student learning and teacher performance. In order for students to productively struggle with important mathematics, they must be taught in an environment that promotes and supports risk-taking and inventive problem-solving. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Come on up, come on up. Go up to the board. She came up with a different method than the three groups up there right now. Listen to what she's saying. Instead of just going through all the equation again, just go, since it tells you that Toshihiko is four more and times two than ki Kyoko, then you do times two equals 50, and then plus the four equals 54, and that's Toshihiko's H. Very nice job. You get that better, nice. It's very important to provide different varieties and opportunities for students to interact with each other. I really do believe in cooperative groups. It gives me the opportunity to walk around, to informally assess the students, and that way I can see where to go next, or perhaps maybe differentiate the instruction at that time based on the information that I'm gathering as I walk around. I also don't want to keep the children bored. It's very important for the children to be able to move around and participate so that they're engaged in the lesson the entire time. Now, I, I don't want you to tell me yet. We're going to see what Dan Danielle's got to say, and then maybe she can identify the word answer to this word problem. Students need the opportunity to make sense of the mathematics being taught. Secondary and elementary school students must feel comfortable enough in their learning environment to experiment with different problem-solving techniques and arrive at strategies that are both mathematically sound and that fit within their understanding. This is a process steeped in trial and error. Therefore, the learning environment must promote the idea that it is okay to make mistakes, as mistakes are very often the stepping stone for success. Put it in your hand, hold it. Stop. Can't let it go too hard. Stop it. Hold it right there. Don't move it. Hold, hold it. Right hold it. Don't move. Don't move. Okay. Hold it right there. All right, Natalie's measuring. Yeah. Okay. Pablo measuring. 36, 236. Wait, the right. students need to take ownership and figure it out for themselves. They used the tools that they felt were the best for the activity. They were given pencils, string, yardsticks, all those things were made available to them. However, there was no right or wrong tool to use. So I left it up to them in order to figure it out. And once they figured out which tool worked best for them, then I just supported them in that decision and allowed them to make their own decisions. In order for students to actively engage in risk taking through inventive problem solving, they must feel that the classroom environment and teacher are supportive of action, movement, discussion, and flexibility in determining potential solution methods. While the learning environment may be physically active space, it should be free of discipline interruptions and students should be on task. I feel that if you direct the instruction of cooperative groups and give them a task at hand to complete and make sure you let them know you have a few minutes to complete and then we're gonna come back to group. That way they focus on the task and they won't misbehave. It won't cause disruption because they're so focused on coming up with the answer to whatever the teacher has requested. I don't find that there are more discipline problems doing it this way. Do I expect to have a quiet classroom? Absolutely not. Um, when I know that I have noise, I know there's talking, there's conversation, there's learning going on. For some teachers, they find it difficult to have the noise level. However, that is even controlled because I set the rules beforehand. They know there is no talking across tables. We work within our table. Um, so I think once they have their expectations, they know what's expected of them before we start instruction, I think the students themselves, they, they, they understand the rules. And th they themselves have the mindset of, I'm here for a specific purpose. And they know what they're here to do. They're not here for discipline issues. Do sometimes you have students who get a little loud? Yes. Sometimes they get a little excited? Yes. But as the educator, as the teacher, you walk around and you're able to tap that student on the shoulder and, and to bring them back and to bring them back into focus. So I do think that uh, as a teacher, it is our responsibility to let them know our expectations beforehand so they're able to stay on task for that uh, assignment. The physical learning space of the classroom is often overlooked when discussing important aspects of student learning. 
Yet a well-structured classroom tends to improve student academic and behavioral outcomes. An orderly classroom enables students to focus on the teaching and learning at hand and not be distracted by untidiness or chaos around them. The structure of the classroom should be one that allows for various instructional delivery methods to be used. Therefore, how the class is structured should support the use of small and whole group instruction, as well as the ability to provide independent practice. No matter the grouping practices, spacing should exist for the teacher to be able to walk around the classroom to observe and conduct informal assessment and provide support and feedback. Students learn best in a classroom with access to a variety of resources they can manipulate, experience, and observe. In addition to textbooks, teachers should assemble a rich collection of other resources for learning. These typically include standard classroom resources such as maps, globes, three-dimensional models of buildings or other objects, measurement devices of all kinds, such as rulers, thermometers, stopwatches, and scales, but may also include authentic artifacts from the world outside the classroom, which can serve as objects of curiosity, investigation, and inspiration. These resources and examples can support the deepening of mathematics. Many students need to first experience the content through concrete representations before working with them in the abstract. Allowing students to manipulate and observe the mathematics being studied gives them a solid foundation for scaffolding different problem-solving strategies as the interaction with the content becomes more abstract.